only on Bloomberg Quint. Welcome, you're watching Countdown right here on Bloomberg Quint Live. So from a dip in the morning, we're trading in the green for the Nifty. 11,637, so almost 34 points higher on the Nifty 50. Banks are doing okay for themselves as well. To the headlines then, markets continue to remain lackluster in a volatile day of trade. The volatility index remains above the 20 mark, though the index is trading in the green. Enable housing continues to remain the top loser on the Nifty. For the second day in a row, the stock has lost close to 10% in the last two trading sessions. Asian Paints is also amongst the top Nifty 50 losers after CLSA has downgraded the stock to sell, citing risk from a deteriorating macro environment. And oil marketing companies are rebounding post a multi-day correction. This despite crude prices at near five-month highs. Uh, good afternoon, Neeraj. Uh, today's session seems to be different from yesterday, but nonetheless, volatility still seems to be the key. Yeah, so for the, as for the oil marketing companies that you mentioned, so for the markets too, in the green and in the last few minutes as well, essentially moving back into the green, led by the Nifty Bank, by the way. So the big boy comes to the party when it matters, uh, needs some bit of confidence uh, for the bulls and for now, marginally in the green. Uh, this may well die down, so not quite giving it as a trending day. It's actually not been a trending day. It's been a fairly volatile day, as Devina stated. Speaking of that, maybe we can get the VIX first before we get the heat map up on the screen. And let's just see what's happening to India VIX. 20.33, still above the 20 mark for the India Volatility Index. Uh, bring up the heat map. It was even Stevens when we started off for the Nifty 50 at least. Let's see what's happening right now. Even Stevens, even now. India Bulls housing continues to grind lower. Uh, Asian paints, uh, the the fire, the CLSA downgrade, crude prices higher, all three. So a bit of a potent combination for pressure points and that's why that stock is corrected. Bharti Airtel interestingly comes off in the session today, was doing well at the start I thought, but out uh, uh, down about a percent and a half, Ultratech down about a percent as well. And otherwise it's been okay. But by the gaining side as well, we don't have too many heavyweights doing well. Remember when we started off, it was all about IT. Throughout uh, the first top gainers were IT stocks. Now that's not the case. Uh, yes, Wipro and HCL Tech are amongst the top gainers, but aside of that, we don't have too many IT names in the top 10 list. Um, yes, Bank tops the list of gainers. Bajaj Auto gains a little bit. And as Devina stated, uh, the oil marketing companies, so IOC and BPCL, the two in the Nifty, have done rather well for themselves. I would reckon HPCL2 outside the Nifty now, but would have done well. Uh, what about the broader markets though? Well, uh, the confidence in the broader market is also a little bit lackluster in today's session and primarily we want to bring up what's happening with regards to individual counters and the MRR will come up on your screen which gives you a split of how we're doing in terms of the advances and the decline. So in terms of the gainers, the mid-cap index itself is down about a third of a percent. You've got a Cummins India which is trading higher though, about three and a half percent. The list of gainers there, RBL Bank, Canada Bank, Bank of India, Union Bank. So a lot of the banks coming back into the fore in today's session. Amongst the bigger losers, still like technology some clarifications coming from the management. They said the company has no debt in instruments rated by Moody's and therefore they've asked the agency to withdraw the rating on Sterlite Tech. Uh, they're limiting their interactions to just two rating agencies, which is Crystal and Ikra. Sun TV is down about 3 odd percent. Reliance Infrastructure, that's down 2.5 percent. NBCC, 2.5 percent lower. On the small cap space and small cap index, uh, which is uh, uh, marginally in the red, enables real estate for one is up 13 percent. So big move coming into that counter. Uh, Linde India, ITI Limited, First Source Solutions, 5% higher. Lot more action in terms of the kind of quantum of price moves within the small cap index is more. Losers then, you've got a SEAT which is down. You've got Reliance Communications day in and day out. Uh, this stock definitely features amongst the losers. And then you've got the likes of a Canfin Homes that see some amount of profit taking in today's session. But what's been happening in the more liquid universe, uh, the futures and options segment, Agam Bakil joins in for that. Agam. Oh, well, we've seen a 
little bit of consolidation today. However, this might be taken as a day where there is some respite because uh, we're seeing the Nifty trade currently above the mark of 11,600 and while well, defending, in fact, uh, that mark very clearly. What we're also seeing is unwinding in positions considering open interest has indicated a decline of around 1.6%. And uh, further, when it comes to the Nifty banking futures, uh, that's where we're seeing, well, more or less of the same, a decline of around 1.7% even as the underlying advances. So about a short covering, if we can call it that, the WIX, more importantly, ha is, has been on the rise and it's rising further, up another 1%, above that heavy, heavy level, heavy level of around 20.4. And uh, in terms of uh, option premiums, which remain elevated considering, and as indicated by the India WIX, we're seeing a little more writing around the 11,500 put. And on the higher end, we continue to see a lot of resistance building around 11,900 and 12,000, indicated by writing of those specific call options. Options. But Asian Paints is the stock perhaps of the day. Uh, well, this is largely because of the fact that we've seen this, uh, well, a very sharp decline. Heavy volumes in cash, heavy volumes in futures and options, and a surge in open interest of as much as 8%. See, it is the other one which is losing out in trade with the fresh shorts building into the system. 12% added in open interest. But moving on, we also have Wipro, which is on the advancing end. We have gains, buying coming through with 7% increase in OI. And that's followed by, well, Ashok Leyland. This one is another curious one, considering we're seeing about a short covering here. 2.5% decline in open interest, even as the underlying advances by 3.5%. Currently, about 90. That's where it's uh, well, uh, spot prices. So it's a mixed day of trade, but we do certainly have more losers in compared to gainers, at least in the broader markets, despite the Nifty is currently trading in the green. All right, Agam, thanks very much for that. So that's a, a quick F and or wrap up for uh, today's activity. Like we highlighted, India VIX, that is uh, one crucial element that you need to watch out for because that's still at those elevated levels of above 20. And uh, we've been talking a whole lot about how when it's at around these levels, it shows a little bit of skepticism uh, in the markets. But for now, let's move on. CLSA has turned bearish on Asian paints as crude oil prices rise sharply. The brokerage house downgrades the paint maker to a sell rating. That's a double downgrade from the outperform rating that it had earlier. Meanwhile, Asian paints also reported a fire at one of its units. Yash Apadhyay is standing by to tell us all about these developments. Yash. Well, that's right, Devina. So there was a fire outbreak at one of its plants, which is based in Andhra Pradesh. Now, uh, this is one of the largest plants that the company has uh, with, a, with a total capacity of about 500,000 kiloliters per annum. Uh, this is the second largest facility and it only recently uh, got on stream. And uh, while the management has not given any specific details with respect to the number of days that the, uh, that the production will get affected, uh, it has stated that manufacturing activity will get impacted because of the fire. Uh, but the big news or the ma main reason for the the kind of drop that we've seen in Asian paints is the fact that CLSA uh, has give, has give, come out with a report with a double downgrade. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, they have downgraded their rating from outperform to sell and have also reduced the target price to 1400 rupees from 1565 earlier. Uh, now, key reasons that they highlight, uh, one is that the weak macro data and the fact that uh, uh, the management commentary uh, from other consumer staple majors such as HUL suggests that there could be a slowdown in volumes of take uh, in the near term. Uh, at the same time, when crude oil prices are at a at multi-month high, uh, would would mean that there could be certain uh, significant amount of pressure in the near term as far as their EBITDA margins is concerned. Uh, having said that, valuations too are on the pricey side. Uh, at, so at 53 times, uh, it's FI19 price to earnings multiple. Uh, the stock is uh, very expensive according to the brokerage is why they have a sell rating. But most importantly, the other paint names, uh, they too continue to trade uh, slightly lower. Berger Paints is down about 1.5% and Cancer and Nerlac too down about 2.5%. Right. All right. Thanks uh, for that, Yash. Uh, that is a uh, word on Asian pains. The stock, though, has been uh, one of the worst performers on the index this afternoon. It's down about 3.5%. Uh, target price that CLSA has put out is 1400 The other big one, Lawson and Tubro may be poised to meet its order inflow target for the first time in six years. Not only has the infrastructure giant maintained guidance this year, but the order announcements in March quarter indicate the company may even exceed its projections. 
Darshan Mehta joins in with the math. Darshan, uh, you know, you had said this a month ago, uh, but now you have the numbers to prove it. Yeah, so basically what had happened was, uh, uh, if you take a look at the math first, let's take a look at what happened. Uh, in FY18, uh, what was the order inflow? So they did orders worth almost 1,53,000 and the guidance they given was 10% and 12%. So these were the numbers that they had to uh, achieve for, for the order to come in. For, so till the December 3rd, uh, till the third quarter number, they did orders worth 1,21,000 crores, which means they have to do anywhere between 48,000 to 51,000 crores uh, to meet the order inflow guidance. Now what exactly has happened is the fact that they have stopped giving exact orders uh, while they classified it into four buckets significant large major and mega and orders below thousand crores they don't disclose they will just sum it up and uh, disclose with the quarterly earnings now in terms of the orders that they've bagged a sizable amount of orders that they have bagged uh, and mostly all of them belong majorly to the construction and the hydrocarbon division so this was a large order that they won it was the hydrocarbon division that they got uh, uh, that was the order that came in couple of mega orders that they won one of them was uh, this was the mega order in Algeria a uh, uh, order worth over 7,000 crores and probably less than a bit, uh, less than uh, 10,000 crores uh, this was another major order mega order that they won as far as the construction division is concerned so basically broadly you can see all these numbers now if you do a sum total of the first number and the last number that's what we have taken as the minimum and maximum and that's the average so minimum if you sum total the first number it comes to 42,000 crores the maximum comes to 65,000 crores what most of the analysts on the street have done is taken the midpoint, which comes to 55,800 crores, which means that LNT has beaten the order inflow guidance that they have given. This does not include the financial services order nor the orders which are less than 1,000 crores. So, in any case, even if you take the minimum order, they will come in with a number which is higher than the guidance. Majority of the orders coming in the hydrocarbon uh, and the construction division, which is again bifurcated into building, factory, uh, water treatment, uh, transmission, and distribution. So, that's where major of the orders have come in for LNT this time around. Now, if you take a look at the order inflow, it's the highest that they've done ever. Uh, if you take a look at the at, at the average number, 55,800 crore, far eclipses the number that they did earlier in, in FY 615, which was 48,000 crores. So they will do much higher than that. What are analysts saying? Uh, JP Morgan believes that they will do orders worth almost 69,000 crores this time around, which is a 20% growth. And CNSA also believes uh, that a 20% growth is potential. What they have said that till now, according to the disclosed order, they believe 54 4,000 of or crores of orders have come in and city believes that 53,000 crores of orders have come in which gives an indication that this time around after years of cutting the guidance LNT has managed to beat uh, not only maintain the guidance but managed to beat it uh, smartly as far as the order inflow is concerned. Yeah, well, interesting. And uh, like we said, Darshan spoke about this about 15, 20 days back and now some numbers to back it. Um, uncertainties, you know, easing uncertainties, both global and domestic, are urging Nomura to go overweight on India. In a chat with Bloomberg earlier today, Chief Economist for Asia-Pacific Region, uh, Rob Subaraman, spoke about why India is a positive growth story. Listen in. Well, we think um, most likely, and the polls are suggesting it, that the BJP will get in. And, um, you know, just looking back at, at looking at the economies, in our view, um, uh, the, the big central banks, the Fed and others, are uh, turning more dovish, and the biggest concern for India has been capital outflows. So I think that risk is faded. Mm. And the reality is, compared to most EM countries, India is driven more by domestic demand. And we think after the elections, um, <laughs> you, the uncertainty will go down. You're going to have policy easing further, monetary yeah. and fiscal, and that's going to support growth and capital inflows. So we think it's a, a good story for the second half of the year. On that policy easing basis, you've got penciled in another 50 basis cuts this year. So are they going to come again back to back? We had one already for April. So you've got April. that well, one got, Now we have yeah. another one come in June. Another so that's, your, that's, that's yeah. your total for the rest of the year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about in terms of what we've seen in, in foreign investment because I do have a chart on my terminal. Uh, we can bring it up now. We've had a little bit of a pause coming through from that. But it's still been one of the huge drivers in terms of what has helped support this equity market which has been on an absolute 
absolute tear. Mm, mm. I mean, I think, uh, and that's why we're bullish also in the currency because it's a more yep. equity-driven currency. But I think, you know, going forward, uh, the, the foreign inflows are going to be very important. Uh, as I think was mentioned, there is this competitive populism between the two parties at the moment, so ahead of the elections. And the big question is who's going to pay for the all the relief for the farmers going forward, plus the infrastructure you need. So I think India has to keep its markets open and is going to be as reliant as ever on foreign inflows. The good news, I think, for India is interest rates globally are very low and the risk is they could even go lower. Mm. And um, India is a positive growth story. It's the f one of the fastest growing economies out of all the emerging markets right now. Well, yeah, let's see if that uh, comes to aid the Indian markets, if indeed uh, bad stuff were to hit the ceiling. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to know when we get to know. Let's talk about uh, the current market situation, though, and uh, what is it that large brokerage houses are telling their clients to do in a scenario which is looking slightly iffy. Mandesh Sabarad, he's head of retail research at SBI Cap Securities with us on the show. Mandesh, good having you, as always. Thanks for taking the time out. Um, good afternoon. Uh, 11 nearly all-time highs, uh, 18 times. Are you guys telling your clients to go out and selectively buy things even now or are you telling people to sit on some bit of cash because we are entering, entering a potentially volatile period? So there are two things that are happening actually at the retail side. Uh, in fact, it's not we telling them. In fact, they are asking us what to do now yeah, in precisely. the market. So, mm. so basically, they they have been sitting on cash for quite some time. They have a lot of them have missed the rally uh, that we just saw uh, in the past month or so, and uh, the queries are now really about what do I now do with that cash? So actually, there is a lot of interest among retail investors to invest. Uh, more into the market. So our advice to them, yes, be selective. The markets will rally furthermore. Uh, 18 that you mentioned in terms of multiples for the Nifty is not too expensive. And if you have a, an earnings growth that is going to happen, if not in the next uh, six months or a year, definitely want to have an earnings growth in the next two, three years. So you should be realigning your portfolio for the long term and, and start investing. That's what we are generally telling. So we get requests of uh, people telling us, what do I do? I have got one lakh with me to invest. I've got 10 lakh with me to invest and so on and so forth. So uh, they, they are sitting on cash right now. Okay. Where is it that then, therefore, you advise such people to park money in? So uh, I think there is a lot of value that can be had in the mid-cap, small-cap uh, space. Partly uh, the single biggest reason that we offer and what we do see is that while the Nifty is trading 18 multiples, there's a lot of catch up that the small cap, mid cap has to do in terms of index levels, number one, mm -hmm. not necessarily in terms of the valuation levels, but uh, you know, in Indian markets, when there is an euphoria, you will have the mid caps, small caps trade uh, at a premium to the large caps. Uh, I think that phase is, uh, is bound to come, will come soon, and uh, we should be able to capture that uh, pretty much uh, soon. Is Obviously, volatility is something that you, you know we are anticipating, and that's something that we've already factored in. But do you feel that the opportunity now is ripe, or whether or not there will be a better price entry point, there will be a correction that will give you an entry point in the near term? So uh, volatility is something that, unless you are sitting in front of the screen, it's very difficult Litigate, to capture. That yeah. means, right. So so. And an average investor is not able to really time his, his or her entry into the market. So therefore, the best case scenario is that irrespective of where you find the market at the time of your investment, just be a little choosy, selective, uh, and uh, go, go for uh, those stocks that you think can do well. Particularly in a situation where we have today in the markets where the financial sector, the BFSI, which is the largest constituent of the market, has relatively I would say underperformed. I'm taking out the large four or five banks, and if you find the general BFSI sector, there's been a large underperformance. PSU banks, NBFCs of all kinds, to some of the insurance companies, they've underperformed quite a bit, so there is value to be had there. As far as volatility is concerned, if there is only one single big event that we are forcing right now, which is the elections results, and probably that will get 
crops, that volatility will get absorbed in a matter of two, three days, <clears throat> not really more. Okay. So, uh, l let's examine those theories and those pockets, right? Uh, places where there could be value. Uh, the question only is, can they be more valuable? Now, uh, typically, even cycles in auto turn, they don't turn for a period of three, six months. The effects last for a bit longer. Um, we've now spent about uh, what, six months, uh, roughly give or take a few, on in what is perceived to be a slowdown in the auto space. Valuations are a lot more comforting if we look at trailing 12. Uh, don't quite know what the next 12 could throw up in terms of earnings. Can this down cycle, if I can use that term, last for a bit longer than what people anticipate, which is till June? Do you believe it can extend until December or maybe even longer? And in light of that, should people selectively choose auto names right now or give them a skip because there are other opportunities available? So we've been always saying and the market has always been uh, looking at the factor that FI20 for automobiles will be a structural shift here. And that structural shift was coming from the emission control norms, tighter emission control norms. Structural shift was coming from certain safety related norms and a bit of policy change wherein you are seeing electrification of the automobile industry. When I say we have not fully, I'm not saying that we are gonna go one, in one big leap towards electric vehicles, but gradual electrification. So that structural shift has begun and mm. it was much anticipated in the market. So if it was anticipated in the market, that shift has already been, I would say, factored in the valuations uh, 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 for automobile companies and, and any sign of a growth, small, however small it may be in terms of volumes, should be should be um, you know responded to with with a large flow coming into the automobile stocks large allocations coming to the automobile sector so i think a lot of automobile companies can be looked at even now uh, even why even uh, aisha motor can be looked at aisha motor is supposedly very richly valued negative sales growth uh, right now but there's there's more value to be had going forward. Why? So what you're saying is most no, so of the threat with regards to these factors that we just spoke has been valued already baked in to the so, current. So price. it's baked in in a Maruti. It's baked in in a uh, Hero Motor Corp. It's baked in in a Pajaj Auto. Why do you say that? And in Aisha? Aisha. Why? Uh, I mean, so Royal Enfield is coming off the boil, so to say. And the CV cycle, we don't know. I don't have any handle so on. Aisha was never a CV story, right? Aisha was always, now, no. always was about the Enfield, mm -hmm. Royal right. Enfield story. So, you know, uh, yes, there is a slowdown that has happened for Enfield because the pace was too, hu too high. I mean, they were growing at like 60, 70 percent just two years ago. That growth rate started moderating and now they are into the negative territory. But I think the base is is uh, now falling in place. That means um, the degrowth is, is kind of over. And uh, here's a company which delivers fantastic EBITDA margins be among the best ROCs in the automobile uh, uh, OEM companies, even in a negative growth environment. And, and the correct measure to look at it is actually the ROIC number, which is far greater for Aisha Motor relative to any other. So you can always value it at a premium. <coughs> you are not you are not valuing the growth story in, in Royal Enfield. You are actually va valuing for that, that period of consolidation it is going through for a high ROC kind of company. You know, the typical FMCG company, right? Mm. The typical FFCG company is one which keeps on throwing cash. Yeah. On an incremental ROC, ROE, IC basis, or it, it always, they always look very expensive. But the humongous amount of cash that they throw up is something that investors will always latch on to or allocate in there. So it's an allocation kind of story of an FMCG kind of company. It's not an FMCG intrusive, it's an automobile company, but you can um, certainly look at it that way. So it's within got great grand uh, brand visibility. So within this pack, if you're talking about allocation, and and you know you're saying that there is a story to be followed here, uh, would Aisha be your top bet? Would you start allocating top down from Aisha? No. So uh, don't don't mistake, you know, uh, mistake me. I'm saying allocations within the automobile family mm. will be a little higher to a to an Aisha Maruti kind of company. Mm. Than, than any of the other automobile names. No, that's Not what I was asking. Name, but 
per se as an allocation, sectoral allocation, if you look at it, automobile is not where you would like to okay. uh, uh, place so within, your bets on. You will place the your bets on the BFSI, which, I, yeah. which is the largest sector, which, where there are more opportunities to be had. You know, since we were discussing what, what can happen in automobile companies, I just said, yes, you can uh, right. uh, allocate more money. You can look at an Aisha motor at, at, at this price. But that is not at this point of time it's something not, which you would do vis-a-vis -a, -vis a better op option or an opportunity to invest somewhere else. When, when you cannot invest in, uh, or in terms of your op uh, options, you cannot invest in a Tata Motors today. Yeah. And there, is, there is a <laughs> great deal of uncertainty surrounding Tata Motors. Uh, you cannot invest in, in let's say, any of the frontline um, auto and companies which are e as large as some of the OEM companies, Amada Sumi, let's say, or, or Bharat Forge. Uh, again, there the outlook is not, not very clear or it's hazy. So the better bets would be a known kind of brand which, is, which has a great balance sheet and therefore uh, superb returns uh, that can be seen. Is it a case to say that these auto angs uh, in uh, the near future are likely to perform way better than the OEMs themselves? Uh, no, actually, see, uh, auto angs are uh, will grow or show profit growth provided the OEMs have uh, good volume growth. Today, we are seeing that the OEMs' volume growth is tepid. SIM, if I'm right, has focused a very uh, small, uh, low single-digit kind of growth mm -hmm. for for any of the sub-segments within automobile. So, angst will not necessarily grow. Only a few among them who have, let's say, the replacement market yeah. to look forward to or the export m market to look forward to are the ones who would potentially do better uh, than the pure play uh, Indian OE dependent um, uh, okay. auto angst. Yeah. I cannot ask you about aviation since you are here. Uh, now it's going through a state of flux. The rates have come off, but maybe the relative uh, benefits that come in because of a large player not quite there in the market right now in a meaningful way, aiding the others. What's your sense? When the numbers were very heady, the stocks in that period too came off a little bit because of higher crude prices. We have higher crude prices, but a disruption in the industry too. What happens to the other two? I think this disruption phase is going to be for a limited duration. Um, so, uh, if you're assuming that market share has permanently shifted in favor of uh, uh, the non-jet players, that's this, not true. Huh? That is not true, right? Jet will bounce back. It will not come back to the. Uh, no, why? You know, I I don't know. It might come back. It it's, might it's might not. It, huh? It's a difficult question because fi finally, it's a question of. How much, uh, um, how much of its current fleet that they will be able to deploy? So it's a deployment kind of calculation that more than anything else. True. And please remember, Jet also has orders on hand, aircraft orders on hand, mm. uh, which are yet to be absorbed. Right now, they cannot absorb them because they have financial difficulties and they are going through this restructuring. So the moment the restructuring, let's say, is successful, <laughs> Uh, you will have the deployments of aircrafts uh, 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 come in, probably in a rapid manner. Uh, if, uh, and if, if that happens, then this whole market share edge being enjoyed by the others will potentially go away. Okay. No, so, so let me ask you then this, that it's not that when this period of crisis has hit jet, uh, Spice Jet, for example, has had a runaway rally. It hasn't. It's kind of stayed quiet. Maybe crude has kept a lid on it. Maybe Interglobe Aviation had a bit of a move. Uh, one, the basic premise is, would you go out and invest in the India aviation space while the growth numbers are still looking okay? Or would you avoid the sector because it's such so a volatile for sector? For retail investors, we always say avoid, avoid the aviation sector. Aviation for certain um, institutional large players can, can work out. But for a retail player, it's far too volatile. There are far too many moving parts and developments happening for uh, for a retail investor to really realize value. So we typically ask them not to uh, avoid in the aviation sector. So is BFSI the only big theme that you are uh, you know convinced about at this point, or is there something which is yet to turn the corner? So BFSI is the theme. It's the big theme. You know, uh, there, there was a background that that has been has 
has been in 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 place right mm. you have had the psu banks uh, go through pcr mechanism uh, you had a uh, lot of them struggling with npas uh, and capitalization so some of these issues are now now getting over psu banks are out of pcr framework uh, npas are slowly getting res uh, uh, resolved there's a huge infusion of capital uh, into the uh, banks and and they are looking forward to growth growth on the business side which is uh, credit growth mm. uh, so if you have all these things happening bfsi and psu bank within the bfsi sector is the sec place to be and then you also had a background for nbfcs ever since the ilfs kind of crisis hit mm. and a few corporate governance um, kind of issues cropped up you have the, the entire nbfc pack um, getting beaten down not all of them have recovered fully right uh, so there are interesting names within the bfsi uh, sector uh, who are still yet to come back to those old levels um, chola finance is one of them uh, chola is incidentally one which we typically keep recommending to our retail investors so we have a portfolio kind of structure where chola finds place in that portfolio Okay. So, so yes, that is the theme. And then, yes, the second theme that we would look forward to is consumption space. So, if if you have the government and and the potential new government, irrespective of the party that is coming in, is promising a huge dole out mm. to to uh, uh, to the poor, it will get trans uh, translated into a, a huge consumption demand. Okay, Mandesh. Um a pleasure talk, talking to you as always. Thanks so much for taking that hour and being with us today in our studios. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that's the view from Antesh Sabarat. Then maybe rightly put for a retail investor, the volatility in the aviation stocks might be too much to digest, so they do not recommend that. Selectively look at auto names, selectively look at financials. Uh, they all could do well. We didn't ask him about real estate, but let's talk about one such stock, India Bulls Real Estate, which has run up in trade today after its promoter said that they are willing to sell the real estate arm uh, to focus on financials. Sharad Dubey is here with the details. 12% higher for this one, Sharad. What are you learning? Uh, so yes, Neeraj, I think over the last two days, the stock has increased by almost 20%. So basically, the media reports uh, has stated that from Economic uh, Times, uh, Samir Gellaud, the chairman of the real estate group, indicated that exiting the real estate business and focus on the aspect of financial services. This is the news post the merger of announcement of India Bulls Housing Finance and Lakshmi Vilas Bank, which was announced on Friday, last Friday, in the ma after market hours. He says he's willing to cut exposure in the real estate if RBI wants. Now, Neeraj, if we see the equity valuation of the uh, portfolio, the development portfolio has around 16,961 odd crore rupees and uh, the other portfolios which, which are like the owned office rental portfolio which stand at around 4,800 odd crore rupees and the land bank starts at around 2,200 odd crore rupees. So basically, if you take the equity value as the cons consideration, that will amount to around 26,421 odd crore rupees. If we take the valuation nearage in the SOTP basis or a sum of parts basis, we see the fair value per share will come out around 284 odd rupees shares after we uh, do the calculations with the NAV of the real estate assets and the net total debt. Now, speaking of total debt, the debt levels picture of the company is at around 13,640 odd crore rupees as on December 31, 2018. So basically, this pure play will we'll, we'll be actually looking at this how this will actually you know go forward. Back to you. All right, Shara, thanks very much for that. That's India Bulls Real Estate. The stock has been active, uh, not just today, but the last two days has been uh, pretty active, and now at 108 with 25 million shares that have been traded. You can see the price performance over the last two days, and those big spurts that have coming in have been coming in to the counter. Amar Singh of Angel Broking is joining us on the show right now. Along with him, Sachit Anand, the ticker of Trade Bulls is also here. Uh, gentlemen, good afternoon to the both of you. Let's take stock of the index calls and then we'll talk about individual stocks. Starting off with Amar Singh, your call on the Nifty and the Bank Nifty first off. Yeah, uh, a very good afternoon. Uh, uh, what we are witnessing in uh, Nifty is that Nifty did consolidate and then uh, correct towards uh, 11,550 and there's been a, a rebound. So looking technically on the charts, uh, Nifty, I would say, uh, continues to remain positive. 
and uh, uh, there is a possibility that Nifty could trade higher. What it needs to uh, break uh, uh, break above is somewhere around 11,660 uh, levels. Trading above that level, then it has a potential to rally all the way up to uh, 11,750 levels. So Nifty definitely any dip should be used as a buying opportunity. Ideally, a very good stop loss is below 11,530 levels. As far as Bank Nifty is concerned, uh, uh, technically, if you look at Bank Nifty, it's also bounced back from a very crucial uh, support zone. And uh, uh, these uh, support zones, uh, uh, 29,700 odd levels, so that's a crucial support zone. And uh, taking out uh, uh, 30,200 levels could uh, lead Bank Nifty towards 30,500, 550 levels. So, yes, again, any dip should be used as a buying opportunity. However, what we are seeing on the daily charts in both Nifty and Bank Nifty, that there has been some... Uh, consolidation over the last few days, but it seems likely that uh, this could uh, uh, we could witness a break uh, breakout. And uh, as I talked about the levels for Nifty, that's eleven thousand six sixty, and uh, for Bank Nifty, it's thirty thousand two hundred levels. Okay, Sajitanan, what about your call on the indices? Good afternoon. Uh, well, uh, we continue with our bias that uh, the market uh, should uh, you know, remain in a consolidated to corrective mode. Uh, though we are not uh, talking about a larger degree correction, but uh, you know, the range uh, uh, which is coming out is clearly 11,800 on the higher side looks cap. But on the low side, 11,500, uh, you know, there's a decent support. So what we're expecting is that uh, this particular consolidation could continue. If you look at the 30-minute, uh, you know, uh, chart, you know, you'll clearly see that the index uh, Nifty Futures is, uh, you know, showing a low top, slow bottom formation. So what we have seen right now is just a quick pullback uh, towards the upper end of this particular, uh, you know, declining channel kind of a formation. So that's why we believe that, uh, you know, uh, the market sh should continue within this particular Bank. So, with that expectation in mind, uh, any uh, pullback towards 11,740 should be utilized to create short positions. Uh, from a trading perspective, 11,785 would be the uh, stop loss for the trade. And what we are expecting is that the rebound uh, could not sustain, and we may see Nifty again drifting towards 11,600, 11,620 zone. So, probably, you know, this particular uh, bounce back uh, looks very good for creating fresh short positions from a trading perspective. 11,785 should be the stop loss for the trade. Mm -hmm. Okay. Individual stocks, then, let's talk about them. Sachitanan, I'll keep it with you first. Well, positionally, uh, you know, we like the HUL, uh, the way, uh, you know, it has been shaping up since last couple of trading sessions. Uh, the stock is now quoting uh, near its 200-day exponential moving average. Even if you look at uh, some of the uh, you know, options data, you know, it clearly depicts that 1600, 1650, you know, the uh, put writers have been really active and very aggressive. So we believe that uh, the, the bottom for this particular stock is in place and we don't see much of a downside. So we strongly recommend accumulation uh, on this counter. 1640 uh, is the stop loss for the trade and we are expecting a rebound back to 1740 levels so it is on a positional side. On the momentum side, uh, we are expecting some more weakness in uh, Canfin homes. Uh, you know, if you look at the overall structure, of uh, a bullish uh, uh, pattern on the uh, harmonic side it has been completed uh, near to around 364 zone. And uh, if you look at the daily uh, formation on the candlestick, there is a evening star formation which has happened. So we are expecting that uh, this particular formation could lead to some more momentum on the lower side. We are expecting the stock to decline towards 340. Short positions can be initiated here in Canfin Homes uh, futures. The stop loss for the trade should be placed at around 360. Hmm. Amar Singh, what about you? I would say the first uh, uh, stock to look at is TCS uh, from the IT space. What we are seeing in TCS is that uh, uh, TCS continues to uh, remain extremely strong across uh, uh, various time frames and also on the daily charts uh, it has managed uh, to breach its uh, 3rd April high of uh, uh, 2089 and currently trading above that level. And technically, as I said, uh, the bullish momentum uh, remains strong from a short-term perspective as well. The long-term trends definitely remain positive. So uh, TCS is one stock one can look at. So any dip towards 2070-2075, uh, ideally that can be a good level to enter with a stop loss of uh, 2024 and a target of 2161 on the upside. And the second stock one can look at is uh, uh, Petronet LNG. Uh, what we are uh, seeing in this particular stock is that the stock uh, did correct from almost uh, uh, 255 levels to make a low of 235 currently it's around 240 odd levels. And uh, technically uh, this remains uh, strong on the 
intermediate term trend, long term trend also I would say it's uh, uh, trading with a positive bias. And in the short term trend it's moved into oversold territory. So there is a possibility that the stock could bounce back. And uh, stock has got good support around uh, 235 odd level. So that's a good level to buy. So 235, 237 ideally one can look at buying with a stop loss of 229.7 and a target of 249 in the short term. All right, uh, gentlemen, stay on with us. Bringing in Avinash Gorak Shekhar of Joint Ray Capital Services. He's joining us on the show right now as well. Avinash, uh, good afternoon to you. And I want to first come to you on a Sterlite Tech. In today's session, the stock has had a very volatile move. Uh, some clarifications coming in from the management as well. The stock had dropped almost 12% after which has now recouped some ground and is down 4.5% at 206 no, I think uh, largely, you know, the drop was uh, consequent to the kind of uh, withdrawal of the Moody's, uh, you know, rating. But I think clearly there has been some management, uh, you know, uh, clarification on that count. Uh, coming to the numbers, Devina, our sense is that quarter four could be a very strong quarter. Uh, one could probably see a YY growth of almost 50% in the overall profits. I think the key number to watch would be, you know, what is the kind of uh, price trend for the global uh, OFC price. I think that is one uh, area where the markets are clearly concerned. And I think uh, once we get a fair amount of idea you know from the management commentary uh, only after that we could see some sort of uh, you know uptrend for the stock uh, the business continues to be doing pretty well they have a large order book of more than 10,000 crores I think uh, uh, the management's point is that the services business now accounts for almost 50% uh, of the order book so to a large extent you know the fall in OFC prices is partly hedged but definitely if OFC prices do correct further then I think you're going to see some sort of compression on the EBITDA margins and probably the stock would take a little more time to climb up you know from uh, these levels would you be a buyer though uh, we have a long-term buy, Devina. We don't look at uh, short-term uh, hiccups, and I think clearly, you know, if you're looking at the digital data story, I think over the next, uh, say, 12 to 18 months, I think uh, we could see very strong numbers coming in. Some marginal, uh, you know, downtick, even if it does happen on the OFC front, I think, uh, you know, Starlight Tech is well, is well positioned here. Hmm. On the charts, though, Amar, a Starlight Tech. Looking at Starlight uh, uh, Tech on the charts. I would say that uh, uh, currently it is uh, clearly displaying that uh, it has got some very strong support coming around uh, 190 odd levels. And technically I would say that uh, the stock has got very strong support. So it's very unlikely that the stock is going to breach uh, the low that, that it has made today. And uh, uh, the stock uh, needs to however close above uh, 210 levels for any meaningful upside. Uh, but uh, the stock uh, should hold the lows of today. Okay, got that. Uh, the other pocket, uh, Avinash, has been the um, the oil marketing companies, and we've been talking a whole lot about how uh, oil is at a five-month high in our brand of crude oil prices. Uh, the quarter four numbers for these oil marketing companies may not be all that bad. They will see some inventory gains coming in. But what's your sense in terms of making an investment case for these stocks? I mean, whether or not they uh, should at all be considered? I think clearly, uh, you know, most of the oil marketing companies are largely, you know, trading opportunities. Uh, our sense is that, you know, uh, crude prices the way they are, uh, it looks very unlikely that in the near term crude prices are going to come off, uh, considering that again geopolitical uh, conditions continue to be quite challenging. And I think clearly, uh, despite the fact that fourth quarter may be good, I think the markets would be clearly worried that, uh, you know, the first quarter of coming financial year could definitely take a hit on the GRMs because if crude uh, continues to remain above 70 to 71 dollars a barrel then that makes definitely uh, margins for most of these OMC companies uh, go down I think uh, a better choice would be upstream companies Devina something like a ONGC or maybe a Reliance uh, which could definitely uh, figure out you know a better kind of chance to you know battle these crude prices okay Reliance Industries though uh, one stock which was down about almost two percent in yesterday's session a big heavyweight causing a drag on the nifty now uh, just about flat has picked up from the lows of the day at 1328 but uh, remember the last few days have not been particularly that great for Alliance Industries however you've got the buying nifty back above 30,000 so that's uh, a welcome sight um, some of the other bigger banks so you've got um, HDFC Bank you've got Daxis Bank Indusind Bank Yes Bank and these are all the stocks on the nifty uh, which are just about holding up uh, in the session. We should pull up a guess bank. Guess is at 268. So back in form today. Yesterday saw some profit taking of about 2.5%. Today back again at 268. Avinash, within the private sector banks, is there any bank that looks good for more? 
Uh, I think frontline uh, banks like Axis Bank continue to be quite attractive. Our sense is that uh, despite the fact that you know the stock has corrected you know from higher levels, uh, if one were to look at FY20, uh, the asset quality kind of cleanup and the uh, loan book growth, especially on the corporate loan book growth, uh, I would believe that Axis Bank definitely could give a better risk reward. Uh, considering the fact that most of the asset quality now write downs have already happened, we could see a stronger fourth quarter and a very strong FY20. Okay, let's wait and watch what happens to these names. Uh, by and large, maybe all corporate-facing banks could well do uh, well. Let's see, we'll get to know once the quarter four numbers come out and the commentary from the managements come out as well. Both of these banks, by the way, remember, actually all three have uh, new managements or new management teams in the hem, and therefore there could be interesting. ICICI access as well as Yes Bank, uh, interesting changes there. Um, what's doing, what's not doing well is Asian pains. Now, before we get a fundamental perspective out there, keep in mind because of the double downgrade as well as higher crude prices, I think there's some uh, uh, upsetting the apple cart that has happened in Asian pains. So do watch out for this large cap name. Amongst the mid caps, what's really corrected very strongly is HD Media. It's down about 15%, 40.4 currently, and a very steep gash in the session there for HD Media. And lastly, Lakshmi Vilas Bank takes a bit of a U-turn, 5% lower, 92.55. Um, we'll tackle each of these one by one. First, Asian Paints, down in the session. Uh, if I can get a chart check out here, Amar, what do the charts of Asian Paints show? Yeah, looking at Asian Paints, I would say that uh, the trend definitely uh, remains positive for Asian Paints from a long term as well as an intermediate term trend. Short term, we've been seeing some topping out pattern for the last few days, unable to sustain above 15, uh, 25, 15, 30 levels. Uh, but if I look at the uh, technically on the chart, somewhere uh, uh, the lows of today, ideally that's going to be something very crucial. And uh, we could see that uh, if it uh, doesn't reach uh, 14, uh, uh, 35, 14, 40 on the downside, we could see a pullback in the stock towards uh, 14, 80 levels. But higher levels will meet with now uh, profit booking and selling pressure so the stock could go in for some consolidation so 1425 1430 on the downside and 1480 on the upside that could be an immediate range for uh, uh, asian pins but at the same time as i said the long term trend remains positive so it could consolidate and then maybe uh, take off again okay uh, the other one of course that's corrected is ht media down about 15% uh, any thoughts here, Sachitana? It's not a trader-friendly stock generally, but the volumes are reasonably high today. The stock has cracked big time today. What do you do here? Well, nothing really. In fact, uh, I think the stock is already locked in uh, within a range. Uh, 50 on the higher side has been acting as a resistance. On the lower side, uh, you know, it, we have seen it a couple of times rebounding from the levels of around 35, 36. So probably, you know, we may see this decline getting continued towards 36. Again, it may you know take some support and linger there, but definitely from a trend uh, perspective, I think it is more consolidative to negative. So one should avoid uh, you know uh, uh, any uh, uh, you know botting fishing action in this particular stock and uh, you know avoid uh, this particular stock e even in their portfolios. Mm. Avinash, the other one uh, which is uh, corrected today is Lakshmi Vilas Bank down five percent. Uh, what is this behavior over the last three days telling you? It can't be buy the rumor, sell the news alone because. Uh, uh, the swap is stacked up heavily in favor of LVB shareholders. No, I think Neeraj, uh, first of all, the stock has moved up quite significantly ahead of this news flow. Uh, probably it is some sort of profit booking and I think the markets are now clearly looking at uh, what kind of commentary and approval process you know RBI gives in because that is going to be a crucial decision for this entire uh, you know merger uh, proposal uh, I would believe the markets would now be in wait and watch mode and look at the fact that how quickly you know this decision from RBI comes in because clearly uh, if at all it does happen then you could definitely see a good re-rating here uh, but till the time it doesn't happen you're going to see a kind of a consolidation process and uh, typically I would believe that you you know, short-term traders who have uh, probably entered the stock have now exited. I think probably that could explain some amount of profit booking which has happened today. Well, certainly some uh, serious profit booking in the session today for LVB. Let's wait and watch what happens there. India Wills Housing Finance is the other one. Two days on a trot now. There has been a bit of an issue for India Wills Housing Finance, 3.5% lower. Just before we get in that corporate guest, one quick word on the trade out here. Sachidan, and quick thoughts. I don't know if we've spoken on India Wills Housing Finance already or no, but even if we have, at the current levels, trading at the lowest point of the day, what would our advice be to somebody who has an existing short position here? 
Well, I think uh, you know clearly uh, the momentum is uh, on the negative side. I would uh, you know, prefer holding the shorts uh, for uh, for a probable target somewhere close to 805. Uh, if you look at the future, the low for the day is around 826. So if you look at the 20-day uh, exponential moving average, is this also co coinciding near to that particular level? So I would rather hold my shorts. Uh, the stop loss for the trade now uh, should be shifted to around 860 on the higher side, and uh, we should continue. Uh, one should continue holding the shorts. That's an India Bulls housing, though the stock has come off from those levels of about 900 that we had seen just uh, two days ago. Yesterday saw a sharp cut of about 4.5% today, yet another 3.5% given up for India Bulls housing finance. Gozer's Properties is the other one. Uh, the stock which made record highs is starting to look a little bit weak. You're seeing profit taking for two straight days now. Yesterday, I think the stock was down about 3 odd percent just about holding on to levels of 900 for Godrej Properties today, yet again down 2.5%, though not the lowest point of the day. Amar Singh, Godrej Properties for you? I would say that uh, Godrej Properties, uh, the low which it has made today, uh, likely to hold because the trend for the stock remains extremely strong and positive. So there is a possibility that the stock could rally further towards uh, 930, 940 levels and then maybe consolidate. On the downside, today's low is again going to be something very uh, important. So, uh, support zone, I would say, very crucial, 880, 885, that's the support zone. Yes, if that is breached, then we could see the stock correcting all the way down to 840 levels. But otherwise, the short-term trend and the intermediate-term trend remains extremely strong. Even the long-term trend remains positive for uh, Godrej Properties. Okay, uh, stay on, uh, gentlemen. Just one quick perspective, and we'll probably want Avinash's view on this one as well. Uh, these stocks tend to do very well sporadically, but ITI, in the release that has come out, uh, seems to suggest that uh, there is a 20% revenue growth in FY19. The total turnover for this financial year stands at nearly 2,050 crore rupees. To know about the key drivers behind this double-digit revenue growth and what could the way ahead be, more importantly, the Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. K. Allegason, joins us right now on the phone line. Um, Mr. Allegason, thank you so much for uh, joining us. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, great. Congratulations on what is arguably a fairly decent year. 20% growth is nothing to scoff at. What's led to this and how does the outlook look like? No, uh, that uh, our order book position is pretty good. And uh, we are having uh, now, as on today, order book position of balance order book is around 6,300 crores. And uh, APO is uh, around 7,300 crores. And uh, further, part of the pipeline is around 9,000 crores. So order book, order book position is uh, pretty good. So we'll be we are, we'll be doing better than what we have done so far. So that's why we could achieve a twenty percent growth uh, compared to last year. And yes, some of the orders are spread over uh, execution of uh, one or eighteen months to three years time. So considering this uh, uh, positive trend of the orders, yes, we'll be doing better. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, the the order book number, as you mentioned, is looking okay. But if I strip out the other income. Um, and if I also look at quarter four in isolation, when I compare nine months and then I reduce those nine month numbers from the full year numbers, then quarter four seems to have been slightly sluggish. Uh, is my assessment correct? No, compared to last year, yes, quarter four, a little uh, this thing. Uh, because of, you know, uh, quarter three, uh, we have done better. Uh, quarter three, if you compare that previous year to that, we have done around uh, 60%. And uh, this now quarter three to quarter four, now around 65% uh, jump in turnover is there. Revenue generation is there. But, you know, evenly poised. Last year it was, uh, last quarter was very good, uh, this thing, uh, turnover was there. And uh, this year, uh, Q3 and Q4 evenly poised. That is the thing uh, where the turnover number is concerned. Hmm. What is the current outstanding order book position? Uh, count order, 6,300 crores, 6,300 6, crores. And APU advanced purchase order, we have around 7,200 crores, which is to be converted into PO, purchase orders. Okay. Um, any timeline for that? We, are, we have been following it up. Some of the orders have to come from a BSNL. You know, BSNL, they will be placing and uh, they are having some issues. Uh, which will be, I hope it will be sorted out soon. And uh, some orders we have to get from defense. Uh, that file is moving. That uh, we are following it up. And government setup, there are some rules, regulations. It, is be, it has to be uh, fulfilled. So we are we are waiting. We will be hopefully we will get a majority of the order in first quarter. Some maybe second quarter. From the seven thousand crores of POs. Yes, yes, yes. The, how much of that? How much percent of that can be converted according to you realistically by the first quarter of next year? <clears throat> Out of that, I hope uh, maybe twenty-eight percent should be converted in first quarter. Okay. 
balance will be uh, second quarter. Any other big orders in the pipeline that you're bidding for? That is the thing. One order we know, as, as I used to tell that uh, Army Static Communication Network for Defense, uh, where we become L1, that order value is something like 7,600 toes. Uh, that is setting up a secured communication network for defense in uh, all over India. And it uh, consists of uh, cable laying, construction of building, and setting up a communication network. And we will be supplying secrecy equipment also. That type, that uh, order has to come. Uh, that is order we have to get it, and that uh, execution time is for three years. That we have been following it up, and you know, since the order value is uh, more, and it has to go through uh, many channels in uh, army as well as MOD, defense ministry, and as well as with the uh, defense finance ministry like that. Uh, hopefully, that will come maybe second quarter, uh, second quarter of this year. It should come through. Uh, this is so, in addition to the 7,000 crores of POs that you're talking about. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Uh, just to get in a sense from you, uh, you know, when you're talking about this particular order, uh, you are. If, if I've already, if I've missed you, are you the L1 bidder in this particular order? Yes, yes, we are L1. We okay. have competed. Okay. We have one against the BL, Railtel, and L and <coughs> Sterlite. Okay. All right, so quarter two is when you are saying this particular one big order is ah, likely this to quarter, come. quarter two we are expecting it should come. Okay, Mr. Allegation, we'll leave it at that. Thanks so much for taking the time out and being with us okay. and giving us that perspective. Thanks. That's ITI. The stock's active today, 6%. Avinash, flash in the pan move or can there be something more serious here? You just heard the management as well. No, in fact, Neeraj, for most of these, uh, you know, B2G companies where a large percentage of their revenue uh, actually comes from only government businesses, I think it's uh, very difficult to give a call as how quick, uh, you know, the execution cycle would be. Hmm. Uh, order book has always been very strong for ITI, but I think clearly in terms of the return ratios, uh, if you look at the ROEs or the return on capital employed, I think nothing great to talk about. So I would believe that, yes, uh, maybe in the near term you could expect, a, you know, kind of a small upside, but for a sustained rise, uh, you know, the market should obviously be looking at some sort of better execution cycle and a more diversified customer mix. So I would believe that, you know, at least fresh buying need not be done. Those who have it can hold on. Okay, Avinash, before we let you go, one uh, stock recommendation, it could be a repeat of something because the prices would have done well. Well, be Sterlite Tech, it will be something else. No, in fact, Neeraj, uh, we recently uh, had a report on KEA Industries. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a company which is into EPC and uh, cable business, and it's a very well established player. Uh, the company has been making a very conscious effort to get on the B2C side. Almost 35% comes from the B2C business. Uh, the order book continues to be very strong, almost 3,000 crores of order book. And our sense is that, uh, you know, the momentum in current year could spill over for FI20 also. <laughs> Uh, valuations look very attractive and you know this business generates a very strong ROE of almost uh, 26 to 27 percent and with an earnings growth of almost 25 percent over the next two years uh, I would believe that we could see a good run up here I think probably a level of 475 480 uh, over the next 12 15 months you know is comfortably possible Avinash we'll leave it at that thanks so much for taking the time out and joining us and giving us your perspective really appreciate your time okay um, we need to slip into a break as well on the note that the markets are still doing okay as we do that. Here are what Ratnesh Kumar of Bob Capital Markets uh, thinks, um, especially with regards to banks as the primary play in the Indian markets. Despite these two rate cuts, I think real rates are still still quite high in India, there is scope for more rate cuts, which could happen in 2019. Now, in terms of play on the, on the stocks, I think for the market as a whole, uh, what I'm looking at is the banking sector effectively will, will be the leader uh, to drive the market forward. A, it is the largest sector, and B, you had pockets of the banking sector or banking and financial sector which has been kind of you know, suppressed because of huge weight of balance sheet, NPL, and those kind of things. I think many of those things, the worst is over. You are seeing resolutions, you are seeing balance sheets being repaired, and you will see the PNL impact as well coming in going forward. So first up, of easier liquidity, lower rates, uh, not too low, because not too low is also not good for banks, but uh, easier liquidity, low, uh, you know, lower uh, rates, uh, overall it should be good for the banking and financial sector, and I would look at banks as the primary play right now. Mm -hmm. and, you know, there is natural um, uh, desire to sort of look at other derivative interest, interest, interest cut beneficiaries like autos, mm. but I think autos have to come back up from a lot many other factors especially disruption in the finance companies 
which has happened over the last six months or so. So I think autos might take a lo little longer to recover. Uh, first up will be the banks. Mm. But in, in light of... Uh what are you making out of the consolidation that's been happening within the pack? Be the PSUs, where you're seeing some merger happening, whether it be now uh, the larger NBFCs looking at acquiring smaller banks uh, to make their foray into banking. Yeah, so consolidation, you know, it is always, always good for the sector. Uh, you know, I think what you've seen, the NBFC issues which, which happened uh, six, eight months ago, uh, that is making a whole lot of them rethink their model. And uh, to some extent, uh, you know, the consolidation that you refer to, uh, you know, amongst the NBFC and the banks, uh, I think, I think that is that is that is one of the reactions of 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 the of the sudden issues faced by the NBFCs, and I think it is for the good. Uh, how much more will happen clearly depends on on, uh, on on on. But I think there is enough and more opportunity for more consolidation in the sector. But the BFSI space itself is, is so big that I think for any consolidation to have a meaningful sectoral impact is mm. probably unlikely. I think it is more stock by stock, uh, you know, kind of an impact. What's your sense in terms of what earnings could look like? What are you factoring in in terms of earnings growth? So this year, uh, uh, you know, naturally lower than initially what was expected, but but still you will get a double-digit earnings growth for this financial year, which will be a, a kind of change after four or five years of pretty subdued earnings growth. And I think next year you will see further acceleration, whether it's 15, 16, 17, 18 uh, percent that we'll see, uh, despite the fact that some of the commodities uh, earnings are under pressure, yeah. but you will see better earnings from banks and financials, you will see better earnings from uh, domestic consumption related uh, segments, and IT will be steady. So all put together, I think, uh, in, the, in, in the current financial year, while the expectation might still be much higher, but I would say it would be fair enough to expect 15-18% type of an earnings growth. And in that context, wherever the market, even at present level, it is not unreasonably valued. It is, it is, it is, it is not expensive. Mm -hmm. I think the real key is uh, to get, for the market to get confidence on, uh, on some sort of policy stability or the, or, the, or the stable government coming in, and then market will be able to take a call. As you saw in the last couple of months, the first signs of that attracted so much capital. So, so I think we are in good shape in terms of earnings. Mm -hmm. How much confidence it gives to the uh, sort of chunky, uh, you know, large ticket investors would depend on some of the macro variables which are there. What is the meaning of this word suspense? Suspense is something very intangible. Say we show somebody getting killed. For me, I'm not interested in a who done it. The moment the audience knows that this person has done it and he has to ensure that he doesn't get caught, there is a certain tension in that. I try to give away as much as possible to the audience and still keep enough aces up your sleeve. I don't think any director would be able to say, okay, this is my style. I don't think I can define it. Watch his exceptional story, Pursuits by Skoda, only on Bloomberg Quinn. This is a show which gets you a complete wrap of all the stocks that are buzzing in trade. Everyone's a price taker, not a price maker out there. There are better opportunities in the marketplace. The return ratios will improve, margins will improve. What are you seeing? Valuations are extremely expensive. It would take 100 years of profits to really pay off the entire debt. Not all good businesses are good investments. Good return on equity could be expected. Like and I think that will sustain. Their numbers, etc., were pretty sluggish. How much longer they can sustain, I'm not too sure. It has never been the scenario in any of the stocks. It's an avoid for him at this point of time. I wouldn't write it off in such a hurry. We are getting into more complex chemistry. Join me as I navigate the hottest stocks and help you pick the right stock at the right time.
six minutes left to go for market closing. We're back with countdown and the Nifty looks stronger than before. So we're now closing on the highest point of the day. 11,657 on the Nifty 50. The banks are doing equally well. So 30,048 on the Nifty bank. Broader market moves uh, were a little bit tempered in um, early afternoon trade. Should see what they're doing right now and even get a sense of what the advanced decline ratio, the market breadth looks like. Broader market performance is not up to the mark as yet. Uh, the advanced decline ratio still points uh, towards the favor being balance being tilted towards the best this afternoon. Declines of about 852 stocks versus advances of 652 stocks. European market open and should see FTSE CAC and DAX and how they're trading in how they are shaped up for trade this afternoon. So marginal uptick that's come about on the CAC that's up a quarter of a percent. Dow futures are trading marginally in the red. It's absolutely flat actually, so you are just about uh, perched there four points under. Bringing in then Yasha Padia, he's joining us right now to run us through his list of Fab Four stocks for the day. Yasha, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Devina. So uh, the IT stocks are clearly in focus today and they're the ones holding up the index. Uh, uh, we first start off with First Source Solution and that one is up about five and a half odd percent after the company came out with their latest March quarter shareholding uh, data, which suggests that ace investor Rakesh Junjunwala <laughs> has in fact increased the stake in the company by, by close to a half a percent uh, in the company. Uh, Panesha Biotech is up about 11.5% and that is on the back of news uh, that a joint venture of Bain Capital and Piramal Enterprises, which is India Research and Fund, uh, has decided to invest nearly a thousand crore rupees in the company. Also, uh, watch out for some of the consumer staple names, Page Industry being one. Uh, it has been falling for the last five trading sessions, but today it has managed to snap that losing streak and is up about two odd percent, with volumes two coming in considerably higher. And the last I want to highlight is ICICI Lombard. Uh, that has been gaining, in fact, for the last five trading sessions. It is up about seven odd percent in that period. Uh, today, as well, the stock has hit a fresh 52 week high of 1077. Back to you. Right. Yash, thanks a lot for that. Those are the Fab Four stocks that we're monitoring this afternoon. A few other names uh, to keep an eye out on. Uh, a stock like Subrus is down about 5 or percent in intraday trade. Uh, there is a recovery in Sterlite Tech, so now that's at uh, 208, down just 3.5 percent. And Edelweiss continues to grind lower, that's down at 186, down 2.5 percent. Our technical experts are still here with us. Amar, I want to come to you with Edelweiss in particular. Uh, the stock had a strong move and now seeing some amount of profit taking but is it likely that there's more weakness in the stock and you can initiate a short position? Uh, I would say looking at uh, Edelweiss, what we see is that uh, uh, from a long term perspective the stock has got very strong uh, upside resistance around the recent highs of 198, uh, 200 levels. So effectively it means that it would, be fine, it would find it extremely difficult to sustain at higher levels and there would be uh, profit booking in the stock. However, on the downside, if you look at it, the stock has got uh, good support coming around 175, 180. So we could see some consolidation in uh, uh, Edelweiss, but yes, the upside definitely seems to be capped. Mm. What else? I think Nifty IT today has had a really good day now. Uh, we were talking about how the day started with the top four gainers being the IT names. Now that's no longer the case, but Wipro and HCL Tech, both of them doing remarkably well for themselves. And if you can pull up the HCL Tech um, one-year chart maybe and just show what's happened, I think this is at kissing distance of all-time highs or maybe just touching that as well. So good going really for this one too. And Wipro 2 at 273 is doing reasonably well for itself. Um, how do these look on the charts, Sachitanan? Would you initiate a fresh trade on either a Wipro or a CL Tech? Well, uh, if you look at the entire IT pack, I think uh, most of them are so, uh, showing very strong signs of uh, bullishness. In fact, uh, one stock that has been on our radar is TCS. You know, probably you know that is one uh, good candidate wherein we still see a headroom right up to say 2170, 21, 2200. So probably you know, uh, if you look at uh, from a trading perspective, I still believe that you know uh, the opportunity in TCS is far better. Uh, the stop loss for the trade should be placed now at around 2060, and long positions uh, can still be deployed in uh, something like TCS. Uh, if you look at Wipro as well, you know, Wipro, you know, clearly, uh, if you look at the uh, entire structure of the stock, has, uh, is one of the, uh, you know, underperformers. So it is trying to catch up and probably from a momentum perspective, I think most of the uh, uh, 
uh, movement is been done and probably the reward to risk may not be that sweeter but in case if someone is holding on to this particular counter i think 268 should be the trailing stop loss for the counter and uh, the stock should uh, be reviewed somewhere close to 283 okay well interesting moves for some of the it names in the session today now i just want to look at stocks which have uh, gained or lost in the last few minutes and we'll then of course get in our uh, research team members to talk about uh, what daily rooms are saying as well in a few minutes from now but just when i look at the nifty 500 not too many stocks which have had a very volatile the last few minutes of trade however trending stocks which are now touching the day's eyes include an adani enterprises which is now up about three and a half percent and has gained only further in the last few minutes of trade the other one is the ia engineering uh, at 1765 that's up about four percent and trading very close to the day's eyes as well so good going for both of these names in the session today avenue supermarts uh, not particularly a trending day it was in the red and now it's just broken into the green so do watch out for this one too just a bit of a spike in the last few minutes of trade but by and large seems to be doing okay ts harihar of hrbv client solutions is what with us on the show as well t is good having you thanks much for joining in hari uh, what do you make of this uh, announcement by india Bulls real estate uh, it's interesting to see that a lot of businesses are moving out of their erstwhile businesses in order to focus on something else uh, but this one is particularly interesting it's got an india Bulls house india Bulls real estate as a stock excited but what do you make of this announcement? I don't know. I think uh, early days, you know, because we really may, uh, especially considering the fact that they're also talking about the merger with LVB, we really have to wait and see what this new announcement is all about because um, uh, definitely it looks like some kind of a large scale restructuring, but I think what is the impact? We will really wait for some more time. And I think the fine print is yet to come out. So we will just wait for the fine print before we can actually take a call on that. Let's, let's work with an assumption that this is all being done so that uh, a slightly uh, opaque business so that's the nature of real estate no longer there because they are putting all their guns in the basket that we want to become a bank and therefore all clean etc but what does it do to india bulls real estate as a stock it's gone up today let's assume that a transaction were to happen they find a buyer at a good price etc for the portfolio for the business what does it do to what does it mean for the minority shareholder of india bulls real estate See, uh, my hunch is that uh, the reason they've been pushing through this entire, uh, you know, uh, deal with LVB is that they want to eventually position themselves as a non-real estate company. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the India Bulls uh, historically, it has always been a real estate finance come a real estate development company. And I think they're realizing that as long as they are stuck in that growth, their valuations are going to get stuck. Because if, if you look at uh, a comparison of a Bajaj Finance and India Bulls, there's a huge valuation gap. You know, your, your Bajaj Finance is about 30 times and India Bulls Finance is about, you know, Enables finance, not really enables finance, has about, about single digit, about six or seven times earnings. So I think unless they are able to get to a higher level of earnings, I don't think for them value is going to come out. And I think uh, what I understand is that very clearly they are planning to either get out of real estate altogether or probably make it into an insignificant unit, but essentially they want to reposition themselves as a bank slash finance company. This is nonetheless going to take some time, I think to nine to 12 months is, is the duration uh, for this deal to actually culminate. Uh, but uh, Ahead of that, uh, any sort of positions that probably somebody wants to take in these counters and, and load up on them? No, we, we like India Bulls housing. I'm not so confident of India Bulls real estate, uh, but I think India Bulls housing definitely yes. Uh, especially I think uh, once the RB approvals come through and the, the merger with LVB gets done, you know, they get a balance sheet. The whole problem with the finance companies is they don't have a balance sheet. And once you get LVB, they get short-term deposits and long-term deposits. So they're no longer in that old groove of, you know, raising money on CPs and lending it to long-term home loans and uh, they, they get footprint in the south now india was housing was largely a west and uh, north based company and lvb gives them a footprint in the south so i think uh, to me india was housing looks to be a good bet at these levels uh, the down though from a trade perspective it's not been doing all that well what's been doing well from a trade or a movement perspective is icici lombard we talk about a lot of when we talk about insurance usually it happens to the life insurance companies what about uh, these two and particularly icici lombard have you studied this? 
See, we have been looking at these general insurance companies for quite some time, and what has been happening is that apparently, um, uh, you know, the, the the shift in business from the PSUs to the non-PSUs is a lot more rapid and a lot more violent in the general insurance business than in the life insurance business. Because if you look at the life insurance, LIC is still having about 60 to 69 percent market share, which is not the case with the non-life insurance. So I think uh, they are probably betting on a very rapid market share growth as far as IC is concerned, and being among the top uh, private uh, general insurance companies, I think it seems to be an obvious choice. Also, what I understand is that they're expecting a quick expansion of margins in the coming quarter. So, you could probably see a better, get a better picture of this whole moment in the next coming uh, two or three quarters. Mm. Sixth day of gain uh, for the counter, the last three months, 23 odd percent. Should pull up the last seven days also to see how it's done actually. 1,070 is where the counter is. Uh, gains are there, but the last seven days probably you'll see a day of uh, profit taking where the stock uh, would have correct and therefore just 3%. Uh, time now to take a look at what dealing rooms are recommending this afternoon. Yatin Mota and Darshan Mehta are here with their channel checks. Good afternoon to the both of you. I'll start off with you Darshan. Yeah, so Wipro is one of the stocks which is doing well in today's trade. It's up almost 2.5% uh, the last time I checked. Uh, there's a buzz of a potential buyback that could go on. Uh, it's up almost 4% now. Uh, so the buzz of a buyback is doing rounds among Wipro and it's doing well in today's trade. So that's something that we need to watch out for. Uh, the other stock which is doing well is Devan Housing, which is up almost 4%. Uh, buzz of a potential corporate announcement uh, that could come in is something that we were told about. A lot of HNIs have started to accumulate the counter. So that's something that uh, we, we heard and ICICI Lombard is trading at a fresh 52 week high. It's up almost 2% and dealers believe that the momentum will continue. Uh, there is enough buying that's happening from some of the fund houses so they believe that this momentum will continue. But Yatin, what are you hearing? Uh, Darshan, Sipla and Ashok Leland, these are on the buy list as far as dealers are concerned. Sipla, dealers recommend a buy today, sell tomorrow kind of a strategy. Remember there were a, a couple of small block deals which happened in Sipla post uh, which the stock is quite active, dealers expect uh, the selling is over and that is the reason why they are recommending a buy today, sell tomorrow kind of a strategy here. Similar is the case with Ashok Leyland, when the momentum continues is one of the top FNO gainers in trade today, 5% uh, up for this one and you know in, typically we have seen uh, all of these auto stocks rally, uh, there may be noise in the marketplace regarding production cut, auto, so, uh, auto sales slowdown, but stocks like Ashok Leyland and Maruti have done extremely well, in fact I was just checking barring Friday. Uh, for the last nine days in a row, Maruti is up every day. Uh, so that is the kind of momentum that we are looking at for auto companies here. And Sun TV uh, is one stock uh, which is quite weak in trade today. As dealers are indicating that HNIs have been selectively shorting some media stocks, including the likes of Sun TV. Right, Dar Yatin. Thanks very much uh, for that. That's the uh, uh, dealing room check this afternoon. Uh, Hari? autos and particularly Maruti after that rough patch that it hit in the middle it looks like the last few days have been a turnaround especially for Maruti. Uh, I think it is still too early to call it a turnaround. You know, probably some amount of, I would say, value digging happening at lower levels. Uh, but you know, I was actually looking the other day at the performance of auto companies in the five years of the Modi government. Um, in fact, the first four years they were up about close to, I would say, about 30 percent. And in the last one year, they lost 25 percent. So if you look at it, over a five year period, auto stocks are just about up about 4.5 percent. So I think um, there is a huge amount of overhang that has happened due to a variety of reasons. You know, uh, financing is kind of dried up, uh, demand is not so robust. Uh, dealers are stuck with uh, inventories that are twice the historical uh, average that they have held. And to add to all that, valuations have always been a concern. So I think even at this price, if you look at it, Maruti used to be available at 40 times, it's now about 28 times. So whether it can justify a 28 time P at the current growth is a big question mark. So I would take some more time to get positive on Maruti. Probably a short term trading bet, yes. But I think it's still some time away from seeing value at uh, uh, in auto stocks. But the, but the stock has actually gone to levels of 65, 6400. I mean that opportunity has been given by the stock in the recent past. At least two or three occasions where the stock has gone down to 65, 6400, come back up to about 7100, 7200. So probably a more of a trading play. But at 6500, 6400, is there value to enter from a long term perspective? Uh, not long term again. You know, as I said, I would not look at auto as a long term at all. Okay. As you rightly said, I agree with you. It's a great trade. 65 is a great trade. Play for about 8 to 10 percent. Get out of it. I don't think it makes sense getting into auto as a long term at this point of time. But the stock, uh, as Dina said, has done very well. I think if I'm not wrong, 
it's testing some weekly moving averages uh, or maybe higher than that and can it do more or maybe it was testing the weekly moving averages a few days back uh, uh, and then has inched up uh, and now must be trading very close to uh, some key moving averages too. Um, just wondering, uh, Sachitana Nuttekar, a uh, Maruti, uh, uh, close to resistance levels after the move or would you believe that there is some more upsides here? Well, if you look at the overall structure, I think, uh, you know, uh, as you rightly said, there was a resistance uh, somewhere close to 7150, 7170 zone, and I think that particular resistance is negotiated well. If you look at the RSI, you know, uh, it is still way, uh, uh, you know, far uh, behind its uh, over overbought kind of a state, and uh, the way the stock has you know, climb from the levels of around 6500. I think on the weekly scale, we clearly have a sign of a triple bottom getting reinstated. Uh, we expect that this particular momentum could continue right up to say 7450, 7500. Uh, 7530 is where its 200-day exponential moving average is placed. Even if you look at a, 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 a directional indicator called ADX, you know, it is also giving a buy. So probably I think that uh, resistance uh, band has been breached and uh, we may see further momentum uh, in this particular counter. Uh, I won't be surprised if we see 7500 in the very uh, in in next couple of trading sessions itself and uh, the stop loss uh, from here on should be placed at around 7170 on a closing basis okay that's maruti there at 7228 the other one would be a hero motor corp uh, and uh, amar singh you want to come in on hero motor corp was that a 52 week low no longer is it's moved up from there it's been a gradual slow process for it to move out from that territory but uh, does it look like there is more meaningful upside to a Hero Motor Corp in tandem with what the rest of the pack has been doing? Yeah, looking at uh, Hero Motor Corp, what we see is that uh, technically on the long term charts, the stock had corrected uh, significantly and uh, somewhere found uh, strong support around 2500 levels. And uh, from uh, there, it has bounced back. Uh, technically, I would say that uh, uh, on different long term time frames, it has moved into oversold territories. So there is a, this uh, possibility of a bounce back and even on the on the yearly charts the stock has taken major support so yes it seems that the bottom definitely seems to have been formed for this stock for any meaningful rally the stock needs to consistently sustain about 26 60 26 70 levels uh, sustaining above that level yes then the stock could rally towards 27 50 2800 levels okay uh, 10 minutes left to go for market closing so let's quickly get in those top closing ideas from our technical experts uh, Sachitanul, i'll start off with you well, we still uh, like Lupin. Uh, in fact, we are expecting that the stock should climb uh, back to its 200-day exponential moving average, which is placed around 835. 814 is where its futures is uh, placed right now. The stop loss for the trade should be placed at 806. Okay. Amar Singh, what about you? I would say that uh, one can look at Sipla. Uh, because uh, looking at Sipla, what we are seeing is that the stock seems to have formed a very strong support and bottom around 516 levels uh, because uh, that's a... Uh, that's a strong candle pattern, also with a double bottom. And uh, technically, it seems to have found a base. Uh, so, Sipla, any pullback towards 520, it's currently around 530, 31 levels. So, any pullback towards 520, 525 levels can be a good buying opportunity with a stop loss of 513 and a target of 543 in the short term. Okay. Uh, Sipla and Lupin, both pharma stocks there, uh, for the closing uh, trades from our technical experts. Uh, pharma once again getting back into the momentum play according to you? Hadi? No, I think it's a lot more to do with the uh, weak rupee, you know, uh, okay. fundamentally not much has changed. If you look at it, uh, IT stocks have benefited and uh, some, I think to some extent, pharma stocks have been benefiting. But I think it's still a far away, a far uh, cry from taking a buy core on any of the pharma stocks, especially after the uh, corporate governance issues we had on Sun Pharma, the slow demand we are seeing in the US markets. Uh, I think it's still some time away. So I wouldn't venture into pharma. Uh, you know, we are a lot more positive on IT as a rupee play, not so much on pharma. IT now, you've got Infosys going to be reporting its numbers come Friday. Uh, is it going to be, uh, again, a comparison between the mid caps and the large caps? Uh. See, I think from here on, probably the bigger story is going to be the large caps. The mid caps have probably played out quite a bit. Uh, large caps have hardly moved. Um, I think in the last uh, probably four or five months, we haven't seen much of a moment in the large caps. But I think um, a lot would depend on this quarter results because TCs and Infos are coming out on the same day this time around. And I think both are going to show fairly good numbers as far as the digital uh, footprint is concerned. So we believe that the real action would be more on the larger names like probably uh, TCS, Infosys, uh, to an extent HCL Tech and uh, Tech Mahindra. 
Okay. Uh, got that. On the charts though, uh, Amar Singh, between and uh, I'm going to go to the mid-cap ID pocket now. NIIT uh, for one has seen uh, a big move. The NIIT Limited I'm talking about. That one's seen a, a, a big move. I'm going to pull out an emphasis. A hexaware and a mine tree. So I would say that uh, from that perspective, uh, NIIT Limited seems to be more appropriate because uh, uh, the different time f time frames, uh, the stock uh, continues to be extremely strong in various time frames, but the way the stock has rallied after a gap up so clearly reflects that uh, uh, one can look at those who are long, they should look at booking profits, but on the downside, the stock has now got very strong support coming around 105, 106 level. So ideally any uh, correction towards those levels can be used as a buying opportunity. Otherwise one should wait. All right. Anything, uh, Sachitanan, that over the last half an hour that has struck your attention? Well, uh, you know, since we are talking about uh, autos, you know, Maruti is something that was uh, in uh, is on our radar, and in fact, Tata Motors, the way it has, you know, climbed up, I think uh, even here we expect uh, the momentum to continue. So probably, you know, a trade can be initiated here. 202 should be the stop loss for the trade, and uh, a move towards 213, 214 uh, could be seen in a day or so. Okay. Uh, Hari, you want to uh, give us one conviction idea of yours? Um, you know, uh, among the various stocks that we're talking about, Bajaj Finance is something we're extremely strongly positive about. Uh, you know, despite the rally from lower levels, I think the whole combination is now getting into place. Uh, you know, uh, the, the cost of funds are lower among the NBFCs. Um, I think if, if you look at the latest manifestos of both the Congress and the uh, BJP, we are looking at a big spurt in consumer spending. I think all that is going to be beneficial as far as Bajaj Finance is concerned. And they don't have too many concerns on the balance sheet front. So I think at about 3,000 and odd, uh, to me, it looks like an easy 2025% upside stock from here. Okay, we leave it at that, Hari. Thanks so very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Your time. Uh, that's uh, T.S. Hari Har there with his views on the market. Uh, just another stock that uh, I want to talk about, and uh, we just uh, saw a big move in Alinde, India. The stock's at 509 now, a big 8% move that the stock has seen, and it's consolidated at these levels uh, since early morning trade when it actually uh, saw that spot. Sachitanand, are you tracking, Linde? No, I'm really sorry. I don't track this counter. Okay, just before we start uh, wrapping up, I'm just looking at uh, stocks which have done uh, well. I, we spoke about ICICI Lombard fundamentally. Quick technical view out here, Amar Singh. ICICI Lombard? Yeah, uh, looking at ICICI Lombard, I would say technically the stock continues to remain extremely uh, strong across various time frames. It did consolidate from around one... 1045 levels to 994, but then again has bounced back. And uh, I would say that the momentum uh, remains strong, so I would say those who are long, they should definitely hold on to their positions. Now the stock has got very strong support at uh, uh, initial support coming around 1, 1035, 1040 zone and uh, below that around 1110 levels. And uh, the stock consistently trading above 1080 and the stock could rally towards 1120 levels. Sachidanan, just very quick thought, 30 seconds. Ashok Leyland is a stock, 92 rupees, fan half percent higher. Well, I think uh, the structure is really good. In fact, uh, the way uh, if you look, uh, you know, the way the stock rebounded uh, from its lower, uh, lower support band of around 85, you know, there, there seems to be uh, some more steam which is left. Probably, you know, we may see a breakout uh, happening soon about 95. So, from a positional perspective, I'm expecting that the stock should again rally towards 100, 105 very soon. I think the stop loss now can be placed uh, on a closing basis through 85. So, I think uh, the structure is getting better, and probably from a from a positional perspective, the stock can be accumulated. Okay, stay on gentlemen, we'll take in closing thoughts from you, but we are ending extremely strong for our markets. This is quite a stark turnaround to the situ situation that was there yesterday. We are back to being just about 100 points adrift of all-time highs for the Nifty, the Sensex about 256 points, and the Nifty Bank, the real hero today, 294 points in the green, so good, good, strong day for the banking names in the session today. The mid-caps and the small caps, they started off okay, uh, they're ending okay, so nothing too dramatic out there. The BSE finally a lot of large-cap representation, and therefore, that's doing a bit better than what the broader markets uh, indices are showing. Uh, let me talk about the large caps first, which is th the gains are quite visible there. Banks would be leading the way, but IT2 present there. So Yes Bank 4.5%, Wipro about 4%, ICICI Bank 2.5% strong in the session. Uh, 
HCL technology is about a couple of percentage points. Vedanta, Hero Motor Corp, Bajaj Auto, so two-wheeler stocks too. Select auto names have come back. What's not done well? India Bulls Housing Finance continues to drop. Yet another day of losses. Asian Paints double downgrade. That stock is down. Some weakness for Infosys after being very close to Life Eyes. Bajaj Finance continues to grind lower as does Titan. And lastly, Britannia, which has not had a happy start to its nifty career. Uh, another quarter of a percent down in the session. But while large caps have done well, the indices reflect some pain at the mid cap end of this segment, Devina. They didn't do all that much. In fact, we would have anticipated a pickup considering the rest of the market mood started to become more sanguine towards the last uh, few hours of trade, but that didn't happen. So the mid cap and the small cap indices are remaining flat for the day, but there is a slight positive bias that's come in. Individual stocks then and India Bulls real estate for one is the biggest gainer on the NSC. If NSE 500, the stock is finally going to shut shop with gains of about 12%. Following that, you've got Alinda India, which at 509 sees gains of closer to about 8, 8.5%. ITI, we just spoke to the management some time back. A stellar turnover is what they've clocked in about 2,000 odd crores in terms of turnover. Big order book positions and anticipating a lot many more order conversions in quarter one and quarter two of FY20. Our first source solutions is Shok Leyland, Canara Bank. These are some of the bigger movers. First source solutions is up about five and a half percent you've got a Cummins India too which is doing well following that you've got a Torrent Pharma and a prestigious states uh, these are the kind of gains that we are seeing amongst top few at least losers HT media saw a heavy cut in today's session the stock is actually bled out closer to about 14 percent lower but remember a lot of very heavily traded stock uh, Lakshmi Vilas Bank uh, sees some weakness in today's session the stocks closing lower lower circuit in fact five percent under for Lakshmi Vilas Bank Still like tech, saw a big intraday cut of about 12 odd percent, uh, but the recovery was uh, equally quick, 4 percent lower by the end of trade. Wells Fargo Corp and Indian Hotels are the other two stocks that are looking weak uh, by close. So that's what you've got in terms of the market mood by the end of today's session. The indices have done well, broader markets not so much so. Uh, yes, indeed, and uh, that sums it up really the activity today. The market breadth, we can just pull up the advanced decline first and then talk about the other factors. Uh, it's looked wobbly, even though uh, there was a bit of a course correction during the course of the day because of the large cap momentum, but ending in the red, nevertheless, in favor of the declines. Yeah, in fact, I just want to pull up the India VIX to see whether or not there has been some. A change thereabouts the heady levels of 20 plus that we saw I think it went up to 20.5 I think 20.3 is where it is at so there's no material change in India fix uh, that still remains heady uh, taking a look at the individual contributors and then we get down to the turnover numbers uh, on the index this afternoon so uh, you had some gains coming in big big contributions from heavyweights like Reliance Industries uh, which uh, contributed about seven points and ICICI Bank, Bank Nifty doing what it did, ICICI Yes Bank amongst the bigger gainers. Uh, yes indeed and the turnover should come up on your screen momentarily, uh, about 10 lakh crores, uh, cash turnover slightly subpar because now 30,000 is no longer par, we've been used to higher numbers, definitely not turnover reasonably okay, yes. about 10 lakh crores. Slightly higher than yesterday is seven and a half. So that's not a bad number to go by. But uh, getting in some closing comments from both our technical experts. Sachitananda, as we step into trade tomorrow morning, what's the most important thing you'll be watching out for? Well, as we discussed, you know, uh, uh, we expect that uh, the market should uh, consolidate, in fact, uh, from a consolidation to a, a corrective uh, phase. But I think the range uh, is very well defined. Uh, we don't expect the markets to climb uh, or sustain above 11,800 right now. And probably on the lower side, 11,500 will act as a very strong support. So we expect the markets to oscillate within this particular range. And if you look at uh, the 30 minutes uh, chart that we discussed, you know, we were expecting that the market should climb uh, towards 11,000. 740 and I think the closing for the future is somewhere close to that. So probably we may again see uh, you know a drift on the lower side. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, markets you know continue to within uh, continue to grind within this range for next couple of trading sessions. Amar Singh, what about your uh, thoughts for tomorrow? Yeah, I would say that uh, I would remain uh, positively uh, positive biased in the markets because uh, Nifty and Bank Nifty both seem to uh, have very strong support at lower levels and. Uh, and we're seeing buying coming in also at lower levels, so I would uh, be on the buy side. As far as Nifty is concerned, yes, the all-time high is very close uh, from these levels. So 11,550, 11,060. So ideally, one should buy, then one should look at booking profits because that could be a level where we could witness again profit booking. Uh, but the trend remains positive. 
All right, we leave it at that, gentlemen. Thanks so very much for joining in this afternoon, Amar Singh, as well as Sachidanand the Taker. Appreciate it. And with that, uh, it's a wrap on this edition of Countdown from Neeraj, myself, and the entire team that's put the show together. Thanks so much for watching. What is the meaning of this word suspense?